I'm Jason Carter, and I play Marcus Cole on Babylon 5, or at least I did. You're watching Sci-Fi Journal on Rhode Island Public Access. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Sci-Fi Journal. Uh, Sci-Fi Journal is produced by members of the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club. My name is Mark Morriso. Also hosting the show today are Donna Drapo. Wave hi, Donna. Hi. And Manny DeCosta. Hello. Uh, we should do a little bit of explaining for those of you who watch the show on a regular basis. Usually we alternate between Calvin Watts and Jake Kingston and Donna and myself and so forth. We've done a little bit of a shift change so to speak. Uh, Calvin is once again on the road because he's a trucking guy, trucking guy, trucking. <laughs> Matter of fact, as we take this show, he's in Rio, Nevada. I think someday I'm going to get a little map of the United States and have a little flying saucer that represents... Calvin is here today. Calvin is here today, so whatever he doesn't show up, we'll know exactly where it is. And as far as Jay Kingston, Jay Kingston is taking a little bit of a sabbatical from the show, but he's going to pop up now and again and do some different segments for He'll be Clip Boy. He'll be Clip Boy. We have Trucking Guy and Clip Boy. Should be a lot of fun. All right, let's get into some sci-fi news to begin. Last month, I mentioned that Marvel Comics, who produced a uh, Star Trek comic called Starfleet Academy, was going to be coming out with this Klingon, all Klingon edition of the book. And since we last taped the show, uh, that particular book has been released. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, good. I did a good job with that. So you've got both the English and the Geek Speak version. Exactly. All right. So if you start us off one week, you're able to buy the all Klingon language edition. And inside was what we pull on an ad or something. Were the ads in Klingon too? Yep. Inside was all the Klingon language, as you can see. I couldn't figure it out. I tried for hours looking, you know, back and forth. And I just couldn't get it. All right, so we'll put that down now. <laughs> and then you open it up to the English edition. And there's the English version right there. In which it's revealed the story was only a Federation pottery contest. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it turned out they were uh, taking ballet lessons together or something. No, it was pretty good. The bad news about all this is that they've canceled the book. Next issue, this particular issue is 18. With issue 19, they're canceling the book, and aren't they? Maybe they canceled the entire line, but what they're going to be doing is bringing it back as a series of miniseries. The problem that Marvel had is that they couldn't have a consistent creative team on every book, and you can tell when it looks like they can't get the likenesses of, say, Chakotay or whoever it was in Starfleet Academy. And in fact, as of this last Wednesday, the first of those miniseries came out. It's called Voyager Splashdown. And I didn't take a look at it because I'm not a big Voyager fan, hmm. but. If that's the way they have to go, that's the way they have to go. So Marvel still has the license for uh, these particular books? They still have the license. They, that's just the reformatting. Okay. Now, do you know if they're going to be bringing back stuff for the Academy at all? or? Uh, they may just go with the ones they have, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Original Trek, and Voyager. But again, that's hard to say. See how the sales go. Yeah. Yeah. I know it seems that poor Star Trek, every time it gets made into a comic, it seems to last for a few months or maybe a year or two of the most. Well, the DC version lasted for like almost seven years yeah. before they pulled the plug and went over to Marvel. Well, and I box. like the DC version too. I like, of course, the original motion picture version from Marvel is nothing to... <laughs> well, not it was that. the original motion picture. That's true. So yeah, guys kinda... running around in pajamas and so forth. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Have you ever seen this, uh, this uh, magazine it's called Ram Chowder? You can usually find it in oh. supermarkets. I'm looking at the monitor, can yeah, you tell? That's okay. You can look at the, you can look at the monitor. <laughs> you can usually find it in supermarkets anywhere. And uh, it's free. It's a computing magazine. It's got some real nifty tips about computers. And it's got a local Rhode Island flair to it. 
And I mentioned oh, the it because... the name like Chowder, how can you doubt Graham it? Graham Chowder, yeah. And I mentioned it because we have an ad in the back of it. It's a free advertising for the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club if you want more information. We got another person that contacted us for information. We did? Yes, so oh. it was two. So there's your proof. Advertising so works. So you'll have to send me that stuff. Yes. So I can call them and say, hey, how are you? All well, that. he didn't give me a number. I can get a number from you. Can, I just got the email right now. Okay. That sounds good. All right. This guy's name was Bob. Bob. That narrows it down. Bob, 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 give us a call. <laughs> if you know where we are, if you're watching the show, Bob, give us a call. Sounds good. And another thing I wanted to mention was our own newsletter, Graffiti. I am holding up Graffiti. See, I don't want to drive the guy in the booth crazy, Michael, because... And we can always hear him screaming in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> what are these guys doing? No! That's Bob, my copy. Back. Put it back. <laughs> Oh, we love to drive, of course, he just bounces from one camera to the next, too, so this is like <laughs> But this is our own newsletter, Graffiti, and if you become a member of the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club, you will get this. We put out 12 issues a year, and it has stories and puzzles and news. Talk full of words, pictures, and other fun. And other fun stuff. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And Mary Kelly just did something called the Five Minute Star Trek Mystery, which she just started. Thank you, Mary. Mary's doing a good job on that. Take a bow. Well, now. Think about, well, no, don't do that because yeah. your head will bump into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to stop the tape for concussion and so forth. All okay, right, we'll edit. Let's talk about oh, upcoming movies. What's coming up? This well, of course, summer. next week is Lost in Space. Next week is Lost, Lost in, in space. space. Yes, that is going to be an awesome movie. Can I push a button? Can I push please a button? Please do. Please do. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> there we go. And who's the gentleman that does, he did the original voice for the robot. He will be doing the voice in the movie as well. He's doing the voice for the movie as well. And it stars John Hurt. Gary Mimi Rogers. Owen. Who? Mimi Rogers Mimi, as Mrs. Robinson. Mimi Rogers. Um, Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc. As Don West. As Don West. Uh, the, the, the two. Uh, Lacey and... Shabert is from Party of Five and she's playing Penny. Okay. Playing Penny, that doesn't sound right. Playing Penny. And <laughs> Gary Oldman is Dr. Smith. And Gary Oldman is Dr. Smith, yes. I think, see, this is my prediction. I said it in the newsletter. This is going to be the big science fiction movie hit for the summer of 1998. The only other movie that's going to do better as far as sales-wise will be Godzilla. But that's not opening till Memorial Day, I believe. So plan ahead. So plan ahead. But I think, in, yeah, in terms of money-making, box office sales, Godzilla is going to beat everything. But in I terms of... So. Yeah, I do. And in terms of hardcore science fiction, stuff like the real... Sci-fi fans, science fiction fans are going to enjoy <coughs> Lost in Space will be the movie. I'm not well, sure if anyone else. What I like of what I've seen of Lost in Space so far is the fact that they're not continuing the series, they're redoing it with um, sort of like a 90s sensibility to it. I, I like it. It's got a nice feel to it. I think the director is Stephen Hopkins, who's also done Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles okay. and a few other things. He has a nice feel for adventure and science fiction. Mm. I think it'll do pretty well. So it's nice to know that there will be absolutely no talking vegetables in this particular <laughs> in this particular show. That was awful. Remember those shows? That was the very last episode. That was the very last episode. And, and you imagine why? And rightly so. <laughs> and rightly so. Oh, Maybe so. if they'd color the guy's face orange, it wouldn't have looked vegetables. so bad. You don't remember that one? No. Yeah. Yeah. There was a carrot or a piece of broccoli or something. <laughs> Kept getting it stuck in his teeth. I don't know. It's kind of. <laughs> It was pretty well. Almost wild. didn't get by the censors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, um, any other movies upcoming that we want to touch base on that you're familiar with? There are, there are two asteroid type movies coming out Armageddon and Deep Impact. Okay, what yeah, do you know about those? Okay. Almost nothing. I know that Armageddon is directed by Michael Bay, who's done Bad Boys and The Rock. So um, that, that'll probably move along well. But as far as the other one, Deep Impact, I had, don't know anything about that. Except for the fact that it has a black man as president, so you know it's a science fiction film because that won't happen for a while. Yeah, exactly. Well, although until way, people open up their minds. Yeah, until the way things are running now, though, a black president is um, probably going to happen a lot sooner than we think. Sooner than a female one. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Which always shows up as a vice president. Glenn Close <laughs> with uh, Har yeah Harrison Ford one. in that movie, Air Force yeah. One. There was a female. Seems like females are only relegated to vice president roles in movies. Yeah. Hey, well, wasn't this a science fiction show? I thought so. <laughs> we could do this politics, all day. Science fiction, no, science. Come on, politics. I do politics at work. Let's not do this. That's true. Let's not do this over here. Okay, and there's a, there's a remake of Species. Species 2 is coming out this that summer as well. That interesting. I'm surprised that they're coming up with a part two since I didn't think the first movie went over very well. Overseas sales. Right. And that's the only reason it did really well because, I don't know, um, 
Jay and I saw they, that yeah. movie, and I was disappointed. I thought it was better than that Batman movie, though. I remember I'd left... Oh, narrow it down. <laughs> the, the one with yeah. Jim Carrey. I'd gone too early to see Species, so I decided to watch the, the beginning of Batman, and I thought, well, if Batman was really good, I'd stay and see Batman. Well, I left about 15, 20 minutes into the movie to go see Species, really? so that said how much I enjoyed that. <laughs> Which one? Which Batman? That was Batman the, Forever. The one with the Joker? Uh, not the Joker. Not the, Riddler. Um, the, the Riddler. The Riddler. I always got those Jim two confused, Carrey. too. Okay. I still haven't seen the whole thing because I just didn't think it was. Well, it's a much better movie than the one with Arnold. Is that the one with Val Kilmer? The one yes. she's referring to? All right. Yeah, Val Kilmer. I'm just not a big fan of him, at least for Batman. Now, the way George so. Clooney, the way the sales went, or the, or the movie reviews went for the last Batman movie with George Clooney, do you think there'll be another Batman film? Well, I thought he was better. So, I would hope so. I think he was a little looser than Val Kilmer, but I wouldn't say better. Well, I guess it depends. The The problem they have is with the director. Schumacher went way too far into the comic book aspect right. of it with that day glow ice hockey fight. Right. And from what I understand, they're going to have a new director. I can't remember his name right now, but he also directed Seven. They're going to be going for a darker feel with the next movie if and when it comes around. And Jack Nicholson. That would be nice. I'm sorry. Jack Nicholson was. Um, Kind Joker of in the first around movie. that he was going to come back and play the Joker. Well, apparently it was in his contract. It's one of those classic comic book things where the villain comes back. Right. So it's just a matter of time to see whether that happens. Or and, not. and wasn't there someone who was going to was hinting around about playing Mrs. Joker? Who was it? I I'd, I'd seen or I'd read somewhere that someone was going to. come... I think it was Madonna of all people that said she might come back as Mrs. Madonna as Mrs. Joker. That would be redundant, don't I'm you think? Yeah. I do. <laughs> You're right, yeah. I do. If you know, if you know, write to us. We've got the email address right in the bottom Help of us, our logo please. over here. Sci-fi journal at compuserve.com. It is make conveniently sure in little, front of you. Exactly. And make sure you put a line, an underline between the words sci and fi. That's our logo that has existed for quite a while, but only now we're finally getting to show it to you folks. We've had it on stationery. We felt like sharing. Children's underwear and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coffee mugs and pens and all this other stuff. And of course, we get none of the licensing fees back. Exactly. All right. Uh, let's see. What's next? Anything else as far as movies, upcoming movies that we're looking forward to? Um, last night, Mercury Rising opened, and that looked pretty good. It's about a nine-year-old autistic kid that apparently cracks a secret code. Okay. Interesting concept, actually. It looks good. I'm looking forward to seeing that maybe tomorrow or Monday. All right. You have to let us know. In the it stars Bruce Willis playing the typical hard cop role. Yeah, he's got a lot of movies coming out. He's got that one. He's got the Asteroid movie. Yeah, he's in the Armageddon one. Okay. Okay. It's so nice that he can fun. still get work and not live off Demi Moore's uh, fees. That's true. All the way Demi Moore's going with movies. He needs to work, but that's besides <laughs> the point. Okay. Well, it's n it's a not an upcoming film, but a film that's been released <clears throat> already. The Dark City came out a while ago. Oh, all right. That was very good, yeah. I thought. I I've know there's a little dissent in the audience here. <laughs> uh, Mary didn't up. like it Mary at all. Mary didn't like it. Oh, she's giving us a thumbs down. Um, I liked it. I thought it was nice. It had a uh, nice feel and atmosphere to the movie. It tried something different. It's, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. Mary's complaint was the aliens did better acting jobs as zombies than the human characters but i don't want to give away too much of the movie because it's really interesting i thought but it's things it's it's very hard to follow things keep changing and it's just it's a very dark it's like a film noir type of a movie and i think the director there's a the reason Crow. why the characters aren't maybe as lively and um emotional as they would in normal circumstances but make your own decisions i enjoyed it a lot i thought it was very different very fresh hmm. good one movie that's now finally out on video that i had a chance to check out a couple of weeks ago was event horizon and i was disappointed big that time movie. i enjoyed <laughs> well there, there was, like, like anything else like any other movie there are parts you like and there are parts you don't like i really liked the, the, the fact special that it effects. <laughs> I like the, <laughs> the fact that it was finished. I like the special effects. Um, I like the <clears> the, uh, <throat> the look. The interior sets were, were were very well done. The look, the feel of it felt like a horror movie. That was it. Was it would have helped if it had an antagonist or someone to fight against. Exactly. I thought that it was 
the, the, the feeling of horror was overdone. They, they had a young director who kept trying to make you jump when there was nothing to jump about. You know, like a shutter would go flying and he expects you to jump out of right. your seat. I thought that was done too much to be effective. Um, I also thought that the fact that the ship itself was supposedly evil was trite. It's, I don't know, I, I didn't buy it. Mm. Yeah, it disappointed. It was yes. too bad. So and you should have known from our review of that a couple of months ago yeah, not no. to have wasted your money. I know. Well, actually, I didn't add a free pass. Oh. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many I, other movies you use a free pass on. Yes. You had said, oh, yeah, yeah, Mimic. Yeah, well, Mimic. Did you yeah, see that? Right. No, I haven't seen that one. All right, now, see, now we thought that was great. <laughs> no, and same thing so with Starship seen Troopers. That. I haven't had a chance to check out Starship Troopers. I'm waiting for that one. That was a fun movie. To show up on video so I could rent it or if I like it. Oh. Buy it. Okay. Oh, she doesn't like it either. <laughs> Donna. Dawn. Dawn. That's Sorry. our cameraman. Behind the camera on, doesn't the like it. Okay. Let's move on. We've, we've beat that dead horse for a while. <laughs> 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 um, let's go into Essential Sci-Fi Library. This is a segment that we bring up every month. We recommend books. Uh, we go into literature. A lot of us here in the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club enjoy reading. It's a, it's a very good hobby. And if you're not into it, do it some more. After you watch this show, turn us off and we'll pick up a book. But, but um, only after we're done. We are only after we're done, not before. <laughs> not right now. Wait, come back. <laughs> um, Don is going to go review. Don is going to go. Don is going to review a book. Bye, Donna. Um, about vampires. You have a book that you want to recommend. Yes. Um, Mark and I decided to both do vampire books and discuss them because they're so popular with Buffy and a lot of the other movies and stuff things out. My problem was finding a decent vampire book besides the ones that I've already done shows on the past. I've in the past reviewed um, Laurel K. Hamilton's Vampire Hunter books and also the Cold Fire trilogy by C.S. Friedemann, which are awesome books. The book that I finally managed to find this time was Tanya Huff's Blood Price. This was along the same lines as maybe the Laurel K. Hamilton, but a little bit of a different take. The main character in this book is Vicki Nelson, who used to be a cop, and she's got glaucoma or something, so she's no longer to be able to be a cop because she doesn't have night vision and she doesn't have peripheral vision. So she's a private investigator. And in this book, which is the first in a few of the different books in, with this character, she has been asked to find the killer of a girl's boyfriend. And it turns out that the, the city, Toronto, seems to think that it's a vampire because the throat's being ripped out. And it's, it's not a vampire, but it's another preternatural creature. And a vampire ends up trying to help her so that they don't go trying to stake other vampires in the city, which would not be good for him. Mm. Killing our customer base. Yes. <laughs> so it, it's, it was a very interesting book. It's a very good character. She's um, got a lot of problems with her dealing with her anger, with the vision. But it's really well done. She's a, I enjoyed it a lot. So check this out. Two books that I did tossed to the wall because they <laughs> stunk um, were Tom Hallen, Holland's Lord of the Dead which has Byron as a vampire. It's not so much that it stunk, it was just very wordy and had absolutely no action. If you don't mind not having any action in the supposed vampire movie or book, you know, you might want to check it out, but I got bored. And the other one was Susan Collins' Midnight Blue, which is a Sonya Blue collection. Nancy Collins. I'm sorry, Nancy Collins. You're right. Um, the book has a lot of action, but it's extremely dark. And I thought it was a little too much superfluous violence and sex. And it was not that I'm against adult themes, but this was just done really crudely, I thought. Um, I couldn't stop reading it fast enough. But so like you whipped through it really, really, really fast. Just to get to the end? <laughs> no, I think like I got to form? about page seventy-five or something, and it just—I figured, well, all right, maybe it'll get better. Maybe they'll stop, and there was just one scene. Mm. 
which I just it just revolted me, and I just forget it. This is a piece well, of garbage. Well, the first book she wrote in that series, Sunglasses After Dark, is uh -huh. I think much better than that one. Well, that was the first. That was just, this is a three part book that I had, that, and that was the first one. That was the first and one. And it had the scene where she is remembering being brought over to a vampire, where she gets brutalized in a limousine, and I just thought was totally tasteless. Well, I think she probably tried too hard to go over the top because she used to write comic books for a living, so there you go. <laughs> well, that's just it. I don't think that you need to go over the top for a vampire book like that. I mean, it's just all right. A little bit, it's fine. Subtlety I don't works. mind the... Yeah, subtlety does work. I don't mind the great descriptions of blood because it is a vampire book. <laughs> I prefer it not to be quite as descriptive, but I could understand her take on it. But adding that along with um, misogynistic tendencies, no, thank you. From a woman writer, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, I thought it was very interesting. I, I, I didn't like it. Uh, Mark, would you like to talk now? That's okay. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. I'm just listening to you guys because I haven't read these books. My, my contribution on this theme of vampire books is a Shadowrun novel called Nosferatu. And it's written by Carl Sargent and Mark. S. Kwan. Here we go. It's a little bit of a take. If you're not familiar with Shadowrun, Shadowrun is a role-playing <laughs> game created by FASA. Do they still make that? Yeah, they still do <laughs> after eight years. It's been around for about eight years. It takes place in the year 2055 and it's an, it's an awakened world where elves and dwarves and vampires and um, trolls and orcs and so forth oh my. are all... To, yeah, exactly take place, they all exist, along with uh, computer technology and the net, and you can actually jack into the net and get, um, you know, go uh, sail through cyberspace and so forth. But in this particular novel, this is a, a vampire novel from the Shadowrun universe, the main character, his name is Seren Shamandar. He's an elf. He's also a mage. He's a magician. Um, and he saves the mayor of New York from being assassinated. And in doing so, he sets up a whole web that takes him all around the world. Some of it takes place in Cape Town. Some of it takes place in Britain. Some of it takes place in Germany. Um, the Germany in, in the Shadowrun world is pretty much populated by orcs. So you got all these orcs in this huge hall that are drinking <laughs> steins of air and so forth. It's pretty wild. It really is. But the whole premise about this book is there's one particular vampire who's created this retrovirus that he wants to introduce to the world that will make everyone except elves like himself um, zombies. And so you have all these people in the world that are just kind of roaming around not knowing what to do. It makes them easier to prey on and to feed. Ah, Microsoft employees. Exactly, yeah. So it, it's a pretty neat book. If you enjoy the Shadowrun universe, or if you enjoy vampire books, this is just a different take on vampire books and Donna has some more that she recommends or doesn't recommend that you might want to check out. Or throwing against the wall in her case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did, did it make like a stain when I went like throwing a pizza against the wall or something? Yeah, nice or testing spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, let's um, let's show a clip because you've been listening to us long enough. Manny, why don't you introduce your interview. <sighs> okay, if I got to. Okay, because <laughs> you look a lot different now than you did then, too. Yeah, I can't imagine why. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to the middle camera. Yes. Uh, this was taken, actually, back at the end of November when I went to United FanCon 7. The man I'm interviewing is the man that introduced the show, Jason Carter. And at the time, we didn't realize that he wasn't going to be coming back to the series. At the time, we didn't know why. We don't really go into that, but we... I think we had a good time talking, and I hope you get the same impression that I did. Are you ready to roll the clip? Then let's roll it. Go for it. Okay, thanks guys. I'm Manny DaCosta and I'm here at United FanCon 7 in Springfield, Massachusetts. And we're about to interview Jason Carter, better known to most of you as Marcus Cole from Babylon 5. And in case you're not familiar with his work, here's a clip to remind you. Where is she? I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I, I don't know. Then you know somebody who knows somebody who knows something. Who? What? Answer me! Fuck. I have to wait for someone to wake up. 
I would advise against it. I see they trained you well back home. Yeah. Well, they said I was carrying around a lot of repressed anger. And? I'm not repressed anymore. I failed once before to save someone I cared about. I refuse to fail again. You saw in film just now is the man I have beside me now, Jason Carter. Welcome to Sci-Fi Journal. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one question I'd like to ask first, the role of Marcus Cole, was that something you auditioned for or did they come seeking you out? I auditioned for it, like I, like, uh, I auditioned for an awful lot of things, and, but only this is something I got. <laughs> no, I mean, the whole situation with, uh, with going out for it, I was going out for a, um, a syndicated show, mm -hmm. science fiction, that I'd never seen, because I live in L.A. and it's quite easy not to see anything. And uh, I went and auditioned for it and I had no idea. Um, I thought it was going to be just a guest star on a syndicated show. And I had five pages, I had Minbari and Centauri, and no reference, I didn't know what it was. But I auditioned for it and I got the part. And uh, I got a phone call from my manager saying, um, oh, you got the part, but it's for three years. <laughs> I've never quite worked out why she said but, but maybe it's because it was a shock. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, they well, they everybody was surprised. Nobody was acquainted with that, that fact. I think it was just a decision that they made at that, that point. Did you already have an interest in science fiction before that? or Yeah, was it... yeah I mean, I, I, I'd like to say I was an avid reader, but that would be a lie. Um, <laughs> you know, I liked Ursula Le Guin and... Um, Good taste. And thank you, and uh, Tolkien, ah, of, course. of course. And I started on C.S. Lewis actually, all of the uh, Narnia books. I loved that, oh. and also then the 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 space ones, <laughs> that were called that he did. So I did a lot of that. And of course, my favourite thing, for sheer delight and joy, is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ah. I think Douglas Adams is brilliant, and I just keep waiting for the the seventh book in. In the trilogy. In the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying he's not going to write more, and then does, so we'll wait and see what happens. Okay, uh, some of the viewers out there might yeah. remember you from Beverly Hills 90210. Now. <laughs> yeah, they're behind the camera. You can't see them. I, I can. I can. But you played yeah. the uh, drama teacher opposite Shannon Darty in a few episodes? Yes, I did five episodes, yes. I wasn't the drama teacher. I was, oh. um, okay. I was a Tony Award winning theatre ah. director from Broadway. <laughs> so obviously from the RSC. So, so we make sure you get it with right. With long in. hair and a beard. And uh, <laughs> I just basically were, wanted to go to California, I think. That was the character thing. And just uh, direct a play at a college. Yeah, it surprised me because I didn't see that until after I saw you on Babylon 5 and I was flipping channels. Oh, really? and, I, and I saw you on Beverly Hills. You'll and I'm thinking, see it oh, forever, okay. I think. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're showing it right now in Rhode Island. All right. <laughs> but uh, anything else that the audience might know you from? Uh, anything else in American TV? Well... Yeah, um, I did. Um, I played a wonderful part on Raw, which I think has been cancelled, but I'm not sure. But I did hiatus. They call it. He's on hiatus. All right, and that was great. Sort of like Doctor Who. It may come back, but yeah. you never know. And I played a Roman catechist, which was brilliant, crucifying people, and they shot that in Australia, and that was great. Um, and I have just recently, and this airs very soon. Hello, could you be quiet, please? Thank you. <laughs> I'm on television. That's all right. We'll, 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 we'll deal with our technical it. problem. We don't even need to edit it. I think it's marvellous. It's life, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I mean uh, it'll be explained when I say what I say, because I'm in uh, two episodes of Third Rock from the Sun. Mm -hmm. I say, so far, because they haven't aired yet, and you don't know. And your agent will call and say you got the role for three years. <laughs> uh, well, no, I don't know about that, but because uh, I'm Sally's... Uh, latest bow ah. for two episodes but then I get kicked out but the good thing about situation comedy is you don't die <laughs> so, <laughs> don't give anything so away some people back. may not have seen that episode <laughs> uh, really are we that far behind <laughs> no no I wasn't suggesting I died you see no, you no. gave it away uh, I didn't <laughs> this will be edited <laughs> all right uh, uh, so there's that to air and that's going to be airing November 12th okay. and when's this broadcasting yes um, I, I believe it is. It's on NBC, I think. So, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, no, our, sh our, your, show, your will show, be, yeah. our show will be on probably that same week. So, tonight, he'll be on Third Rock from the Sun. Tonight, <laughs> I'll be on Third Rock from the Sun. Yes, that's absolutely right. Must see Wednesday TV. Exactly. <laughs> and the following week, I'll be on. Yeah. And uh, it was great fun, actually, working with uh, that, that crazy bunch of people, because they all are, from the producers down. They're all wonderfully crazy. <coughs> And, uh, and it was good fun. They were very welcoming. 
It's an interesting it tale like about that. Show. Yes, it is. The interesting thing about that uh, was I was actually the third third actor in the part, <laughs> but that's a long story. <laughs> okay. uh, one question I do want to ask you about um, Babylon 5, as far as Marcus Cole. The fight scene yeah. with Narun, the, I believe the actor is John Nesbitt. Yes. That whole is fight that right? scene with the pikes yeah. Yeah. and the uh, ceremonies of light and dark, was it? I don't remember a specific episode, but that whole fight scene with the pikes to the death, Yes. Did you choreograph that yourself, or was that something that was taught no, to you on Nesbitt? No, that, that's, no, uh, well, it's kind of a joint choreo, because we've got the fight director, Kerry. Okay. And, uh, and it's a joint thing, because you've got stunt guys as well. I mean, me being the actor I am, I'm hoping that, because the stunt guys will have to do their thing, because it's all to do with insurance companies, apparently. <laughs> but I'm... I'm a kind of arrogant British actor who's done a lot of stage, and I want to do my fight. I, I much <laughs> prefer that. So get the face on film. Uh, well, that's that's what. Well, exactly. It's, it's, you can't a long shot of two guys leaping around and doing ninja ninja <laughs> kicks, and then cut to close up of two actors going <laughs> with each with yeah. each other. It goes back to what you never said really all. works for me personally. But when you see two actors actually going at it, then you see the intention on their face. It goes back to what you were saying earlier about Starsky and Hutch. You actually saw them drive up I the car and that. pull up. I loved that. And <laughs> leaping in through the window. And Before cutting that. to the stunt man. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's much... Of course, you can injure a lot of actors that way, but I, I, <laughs> if it's just a fight, then if, if you uh, do Romeo and Juliet, which I've done, and you're fighting Tybalt to the death, the fight works when the audience is scared someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> I mean, that's when you know... When it's not a bad thing. It's like, oh, we were really worried someone's going to get hurt. Good. You did a bloody good job then, because that's the intention. That's what you're trying to impress with control. But they don't know that. You know. Uh, you're with me. Um, that's one, it. Okay. One thing I heard. Uh, it's been said that Bill Mooney had a lot of suggestions for J. Michael Straczynski as far as what he wanted to do with Lanier. If you had your choice, what you would like to see done with Marcus? What would I like to if see? If you had your druthers, what would you have liked to see done with Marcus? Well, I mean, it's still not impossible. What I'd like to see done with Marcus is that um, Marcus heads up a ranger, um, a whole ranger troop, a ranger fleet, perhaps, and um, um, shoots off into a spin off series called Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a thought, isn't it? Well, I put it to him. <laughs> think big, think big. <laughs> yes, that would and, be um, And be besides Babylon 5, what will you be doing in the future besides this? Um, Third Rock from the Sun. Is there um, anything else planned in the gardening. future? Gardening. Uh, gardening. I'll be doing a lot of gardening, as much <laughs> gardening as you can do in uh, in Los Angeles, where there are no seasons. So I'm not <laughs> used to that. But uh, no, I'm I'm going up for for movies and well, I'm things like Georgia. I'm going up for things, yeah. and something will pan out because it always does. I mean, it always does. Obviously, we want to make someone's living as an actor. <laughs> And I have been doing it, so therefore it probably will carry on. <laughs> as, as an actor, do you find it more fulfilling to do series work like Babylon 5 or movies like Georgia with J Jennifer Jason? That was, that, was, that was, I think, uh, Georgia with Jennifer Jason Lee was, uh, was, was great. I mean, how it came out in the film. Obviously, what you film and what ends up in the film is never the same. So I was thinking get some T-shirts up. You know, <laughs> I suffered in the edit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but in terms of doing the actual work... I loved it. It was a great commitment in there, uh, and uh, good character stuff. Uh, my favourite medium, I have to say, just in terms of being an actor, is the theatre. More directly, which I the haven't audience. done. Yeah, and also it's something which you are doing for a period of time and changes. Anything in film or on film, it doesn't matter how many takes you do. There's going to be a finite number of takes, and that's it. Whatever you've done, that's 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 where it stays. That's that's how how developed it's going to become. Whereas if you're doing theatre, the show, if you're with a good company, the show will get better and better and better and move up levels as, as you find things out. And also the, it's the, the gratification is immediate because there's an audience. You, you are with an audience and uh, that energy is something <coughs> which uh, is, is a great experience and terrifying <laughs> uh, perhaps, but it's a great experience. So I love that. I love that. <laughs> okay, uh, as far as I, this is my first convention seeing you. Um, what, is, what is your uh, take on the audience response to you? Like you were well, signing particular convention. You were signing. I autog loved it. <laughs> Five hours in the autograph line. This man. <laughs> well, apart from the fact that you're using these, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to knock pilot, but um, there is a solvent in there. It even says vapor is harmful. <laughs> but if you spend five hours with about five of these pens in front of you. 
Yeah, you were going for that Sharpie high. <laughs> oh, I think I was. I think I was way out there at the end of it. <laughs> I don't know what I was writing, probably. <laughs> Well, you made a lot of people happy on the line there. Yeah, well, you... I think it's just staying there. I, I've just got this philosophy. If someone's prepared to stand for five hours to get my signature, then I'm going to sit there. <laughs> I'm going to sit there. There's the least I can do. Well, th thank you very much for your time, Mr. That's Carter. It. That's the, it. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. We have to let this man go. He's been a trooper. Have I? Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Sullivan's Carter. Sullivan's still giving me problems. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Jason Carter, Marcus Cole on Babylon 5, thank you so much for your time. Back to you in the studio. Absolutely. <laughs> and please be getting back on the camera. There we go. Okay, um, uh, one thing I did want to point out and correct with, okay, thank you. One thing I did want to point out that Jason and I were both wrong. It wasn't John Nesbitt that played uh, Nerun in that clip, it was John Vickery. But it was after a long weekend, so we were both a little out of it. Um, and um, the clip does seem a little dated because I did film it in November before uh, we found out whether or not he was returning for fifth season but it helps now that TNT is running Babylon 5 every night so at the moment they're showing his episode so we're right back where we started Yeah, that's I good. like that that was a good interview nice job well thank done you. thank you Donna's got some stuff she wants to share with us too yes Brendan Ryan from, who is in third grade at St. Pius School sent me a report on Animorphs, the first book of the Animorphs so, um, stories. I don't know, there's a glare, yeah. There you go. Yeah, he did a little artwork there, very nice. And he really enjoys these books. And it's about five kids who kind of stumble across a um, alien in a fallen spacecraft. And they, the, as the alien is dying, he passes on some technology that they can transmorph into other creatures just by having once touched them. They absorb the DNA from them, and then they're able to turn into whatever creatures they are. And they are trying to do it. They are given this because they want to help save the world because there are other aliens which aren't quite as nice who are trying to take over every planet around and they just feel that humans are a little weak and are easily taken over. The bad aliens are called the Yeekers and they're a form of parasite. The the kind of, yeah, Yeekers. Yeekers. You see them, that's what you see. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't see them usually because they're a parasite. Oh, all right. They're kind of like, I guess, a little slug-like thing okay. maybe and they just take you over. So they hand them off into an elephant. And so much for the geekers. <laughs> Brains of a llama. <laughs> it's it's uh. a really good book. He let me borrow the book. This is the book where he kind of you see where he got the idea for the picture. Yep. And it's a very well written book. It's a lot of action to it. It's fast moving, and it was very interesting. It's all told from the point of view of one of the kids. That's the same as all the books, right? There's each one I believe so, yeah. They, there's each, mm. yeah. I think they'll have each one a different um, child. And he wrote me about the, his favorite part of the story, which is the beginning when they have found the creature. And he tells me a little bit about the what's going on in the story. And he, they, they, how they learn about the Yeager invasion. And one of the main bad guys, the worst of the Yeekers, is called Visa 3. And he is the only one of the Yeekers that can transmorph as well as these good aliens, which gave them the powers. The, the good guy was an Andalite war prince. And he it goes oh, on. Not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, me too. <laughs> he doesn't survive, but they had the. Um, but he does give them the power, and he talks about the um, the morphing technology, the absorbing the DNA through touch, and the friends have a, have to concentrate on the animal they want to become. The process isn't painful, and when they're inquiring the animal, the animal usually goes into a trance. Um, Jake has a rhino and a tiger morph, and if the animals don't go 